My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about developing a growth mindset to retire early. Having the right mindset is so impactful. In this video, we're gonna talk about what are the differences between having a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, and why are so many people failing at developing a growth mindset? And then lastly here, developing a growth mindset to retire early. A few years ago, when I was working and living in Germany, I came across the book Mindset. When I first read this book, it was from a recommendation from, from a colleague and said, hey, this is something that's really helped me out. And so I decided to read the book and I was very open to the concept of, okay, well, how can having the right or developing the right mindset help me as an individual? And looking back, ever since reading this book, my life has changed. The way that I view things, the way that I approach things is fundamentally different. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. The book was written a few years back from a Stanford University professor in Carol Dweck. Carol Dweck, what she did is she analyzed and, and viewed how different individuals, mostly children and students, were developing based off of their mindset, whether they had a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. So what does that all mean? There's two different types of mindsets. There's a fixed mindset and there's a growth mindset. When looking at the fixed mindset, intelligence is static. You're not going to grow, everything is constant. Your innate abilities remain the same, they're constant, and you cannot grow or develop new, new abilities. A growth mindset, intelligence, it can be developed. It's more like your emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence versus IQ. Whereas your IQ, you can't necessarily increase your IQ, but you absolutely can increase your emotional intelligence, your EQ. And so when looking at a fixed mindset, this really leads to a desire to look smart or to appear smart on the outside. With a growth mindset, it leads to a desire to learn and grow. Now you can have a fixed mindset in some areas and a growth mindset in other areas. For example, when looking at challenges, a fixed mindset is looking to avoid challenges, where a growth mindset embraces challenges. When looking at obstacles, a fixed mindset looks to give up easily and a growth mindset looks at it as a challenge. They wanna pursue it even despite the setback of failure. When it comes to effort, a fixed mindset looks at this from a perspective of how can I get by with the least amount of effort possible? Now, with a growth mindset, they're looking to achieve excellence and go above and beyond and become the best version of themselves. When it comes to criticism, a fixed mindset is looking to ignore criticism and ignore negative feedback. They want to remain complacent. Now, with a growth mindset, they're looking to learn from criticism, embrace it, embrace constructive feedback so that they can grow and develop. When it comes to success of others, a fixed mindset feels threatened by other successful people. They don't want others to succeed. When it comes to a growth mindset, they find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. They embrace other successes and learn from those so that they can better their own lives. As a result of this, having a fixed mindset, you're plateauing your growth. You're reaching your full potential and nothing more. And this really confirms, as it states here, a deterministic view on the world. Whereas with a growth mindset, this would result in having a higher level of achievement and ultimately give greater sense of free will. So what does it actually mean to have a growth mindset according to Carol Dweck? Individuals who believe their talents can be developed through hard work, good strategies, and input from others have a growth mindset. They tend to achieve more than those with a fixed mindset. Those who believe their talents are innate gifts. This is because they worry less about looking smart and they put more energy into learning. Even the greatest athletes in the world cannot rely on talent alone. They have to work hard for their success and it starts with developing the right mindset. The challenge, like I would watch Magic play, I'd watch Michael play, and I would see them do these unbelievable things and I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. So when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. So why do so many people fail at developing a growth mindset? When looking at this from an investing perspective, a lot of people with a fixed mindset look at things in terms of problems and barriers 
that they cannot overcome instead of opportunities to grow. Have you ever said before, I can't invest today because the market's at all time highs. I can't invest today, I'll wait for the next market correction. Or the stock market is too risky. Or I don't want to invest because I don't want to lose all of my money. Or only the rich can retire early or only rich people can win at the stock market. Or, well, I don't want to retire early because I might be bored. And you think of a thousand reasons of why it wouldn't work, why you can't do it. That is why so many people fail at developing a growth mindset. They give up before they even begin. Another reason why so many people fail at developing a growth mindset because they're so stuck in the herd mentality. Everyone is buying a new car, so I need to as well. I need to keep up with my neighbor. My neighbor just bought a new toy and I need to buy the same thing or a better one. Everyone is doing it, so I need to as well. Having a fixed mindset is rationalizing that you're doing it because everybody else is doing it. When I was a kid, my mom would always say, Jake, are you gonna do this because everybody else is doing it? And would always use the example, if your friends jumped off a cliff, would you do it as well? At the time when you hear that example of, hey, if everybody is doing it, would you do it? Would you jump off a cliff if every, everyone else was doing it? When looking at that example, it seems so obvious, of course not, of course I wouldn't do that because that would just be ridiculous. When it comes to other areas of our lives, if we take a step back and we think, okay, well, actually everybody else is doing it and I'm following the herd, maybe I need to look at things that are different from a different light and from a different perspective. People with a fixed mindset fear that their deficiencies or vulnerabilities will be revealed. They're led by fear and they're scared. People with a growth mindset embrace their deficiencies or their vulnerabilities. And they're not led by fear, they're led by opportunity to grow and to learn. When looking to develop a growth mindset to retire early, you don't wanna waste your time looking smart or appearing to be smart when you could use that time to actually become smart. I think that's the most important thing here is the appearance of the two. With a fixed mindset, you want to appear as if you're being successful. And with a growth mindset, you're taking the actions you're necessary, you're failing, you're getting up and you're, you're progressing. And it's not a perfect straight line up, up and to the right. It is a process. And that is the most important thing that you need to understand when developing a growth mindset when looking to retire early. There are gonna be bumps in the road along the way. So where do you start? You start with setting the goal to develop the skills you need to be able to retire early. It starts with setting that goal, having that vision, making it a priority. And then the first thing that you need to do is you need to educate yourself educate yourself on what it means to be financially independent. Is it possible? Is this the right approach for you? Should you pursue such a goal? The second is you need to develop the behaviors needed to become financially independent. So what are those behaviors? You need to get out of consumer debt. If you're paying seven or eight or 9% on a car loan for seven years, that is the first thing that you need to do. You need to get out of consumer debt. As long as you're paying somebody else, you're not paying yourself. The next thing you need to do is you need to cut your expenses. If you're overpaying for your, your utility bill, your phone bill, your food expenses, whatever it may be, you need to cut your expenses where you can. I'm not talking about pension pennies. I'm not talking about living off of top ramen. I'm talking about cutting out those unnecessary things that you don't necessarily need to appear smart, to appear rich. And then the third thing is you need to get off your ass you need to make more money. You need to side hustle. You can't just sit here and do nothing and expect things to change. You need to get off your ass and take action. The third thing is you need to work hard every day and surround yourself with positive influences. You need to be around people that are going to lift you up and not tear you down. The fourth thing that you need to do is you need to embrace failure. You're going to fail. You look at all these great inventors, you look at these great entrepreneurs, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, you name it. They've all had their fair share of hardships. They've learned and they've grown from their mistakes. So many people don't start because they're afraid to fail. This is one of the biggest tragedies of our generation in when we go to school, when we go to university, we learn that making a mistake is wrong. You can't make a mistake. If you get a B or a C or a D, if you get the wrong answer, you're wrong. And that creates a society of perfectionism. We're all pursuing perfection. We're never going to reach perfection. We're human beings, we make mistakes. 
And by having that mindset of there's only right and wrong, you're never going to be able to achieve financial independence and be truly free and truly have joy in your life. The fifth and probably the most important is to never give up. Never give up. There's going to be hard days. There's going to be easy days. You have to understand that this is part of the process. It's not a straight line up and to the right. It's kind of a zigzag. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. What defines you is what you do on those bad days, picking yourself up and pushing forward and continuing to go and move forward. For me, that is the definition of having a growth mindset, acknowledging that you're going to fail, acknowledging that you're going to have challenges in your life, but embracing them, not fearing them, not shying away from them, but embracing them and leveraging them to make you the best version of yourself. Your mindset is just a belief. You can change your beliefs and thereby change your reality. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks, nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Everyone can develop a growth mindset. And yes, I'm talking to you. You that are watching and listening to this video, you can develop a growth mindset. After reading the book Mindset, I no longer look at things as problems, but as challenges. For example, my wife and I want to retire in eight to 10 years. It would be easy for us to just not even try and say that this goal is impossible. I believe nothing is impossible with the right mindset. We use a growth mindset to guide our behavior. There are no problems, only challenges. By developing a growth mindset, we turn our beliefs into a reality. Thank you so much everybody for watching the video. If you're new to the channel, I'd invite you to subscribe. If you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and I'll catch everybody in the next video.